Many objects carry deep religious significance, but very few match the weight the Ark of Covenant holds among Christians. Its place in religious history is massive, yet its location has perplexed historians, experts, and archaeologists for ages. But hey, the latest scoop from scientists exploring a simple cave is stirring up excitement, possibly bringing the missing puzzle piece to light after thousands of years. What's the deal with the Ark of Covenant? Why does it matter, and guess what? Scientists might have just hit the jackpot in finding it. Hang tight for all the juicy details. The Ark of the Covenant is an absolute marvel steeped in the captivating, mysterious history of both Judaism and Christianity. Picture this, it's a fancy wooden chest, all decked out in gold, holding the two stone tablets etched with the Ten Commandments that God handed down to Moses atop Mount Sinai. According to the Bible, this epic box also packed a jar of manna, that magical grub keeping the Israelites going strong in the wilderness, plus Aaron's rod, the stick that bloomed to seal God's pick of Aaron as the high priest. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. But wait, the Ark wasn't just some treasure chest for holy relics. It was a symbol of God's power and presence among his peeps. The Bible paints this vivid picture of God having heart-to-heart -heart chats with Moses between these two winged creatures, known as cherubim, chilling on the ark's lid, aka the mercy seat. And get this, they lugged this ark into battles, and bam! Victory vibes against their enemies. Remember when they strolled around Jericho with it? Walls came tumbling down, paving their way to conquest. Now, here's the kicker, the Ark symbolized God's covenant with his squad and his hopes that they'd stick to his rules. The Ten Commandments? Not just a bunch of regulations, they were like God's essence on paper, shouting out his love, fairness, purity, and loyalty. They nudged his peeps to mirror these vibes in their gig with him and with others. The Ark was a constant reminder to the Israelites that they were handpicked by God, a sort of VIP club, if you will, his treasured crew, a league of priests, and a holy nation. This thing was so holy that not just anyone could casually saunter up to it or lay a finger on it. Nope, it was stashed away in this special tent called the Tabernacle, decked out as per God's very own blueprint, crafted by top-notch artisans following his every instruction. And here's the kicker within the kicker, only the Levites, the priestly bunch were given the VIP pass to carry and tend to the Ark within the tabernacle. Even among them, talk about exclusive. All right, picture this. In the tabernacle, this super special chamber existed, like the VIP section of a club, called the Holy of Holies. Now, only the big boss, the high priest, scored an invite to this exclusive spot. And get this, he could only roll in once a year, specifically on the Day of Atonement. His gig? Sprinkling blood on the mercy seat atop the Ark, sort of like hitting the reset button for the people's slip-ups. And you didn't want to mess with these rules, breaking them led to some hardcore consequences, like death or getting hit with some gnarly diseases. Let's talk mishaps. Remember Uzzah? Poor guy tried to steady the ark while it hitched a ride on a cart and bam, God took him out on the spot. 
and when some Philistines snagged the ark and stashed it in their crib, they faced a plague party, tumors and rat infestations galore, until they gave it back. Lesson learned, hands off the ark. But here's the twist, the ark wasn't just a blast from the past for ancient Israelites, it's still a big deal for Christians today. For them, Jesus Christ rocks the house as the ultimate fulfillment of God's covenant, even surpassing Moses, Aaron, and that epic wooden chest. Now, let's break down this iconic Arkansas. It was like the OG treasure chest, made of acacia wood, super sturdy for those desert vibes, and coated inside out with pure gold, reflecting God's glory and holiness. This thing measured 111 by 67 by 67 centimeters and had a fancy gold rim and four gold rings for carrying, hooked up to gold-plated wooden poles. Those poles? Hands off, too sacred to lay human hands on. The star feature? The cover, aka the carrot, made of solid gold, a whole hand thick, with these two golden cherubs chillin' on top, wings spread like they own the joint. These cherubs? They symbolized God's heavenly throne, the angels doing their thing. This mercy seat wasn't just for show, it's where God showed his forgiving side on the Day of Atonement when the high priest did his blood-sprinkling routine for the people's slip-ups. Inside this gold-plated rock star chest? The real deal? Those Ten Commandments were in there, God's rulebook for his crew. Plus, the manna pot, that magical wilderness takeout, and Aaron's rod, the staff that had a growth spurt to seal Aaron's high priest deal. This ark was the centerpiece, the rock star, residing in the Holy of Holies, where only the high priest made a once-a-year pit stop. They believed this spot, with the Ark Chilin on a stone called the Even Hossa, was the world's epicenter, talk about cosmic vibes. But here's where things get mysterious, poof, the Ark vanished. One of the biggest religious history head-scratchers. It held the commandments, the manna, and Aaron's rod, symbolizing God's power and presence among his squad. It was the heart of Israelite worship and rituals. So, the Ark of the Covenant was a big deal, especially chillin' in the Holy of Holies at the Temple in Jerusalem. But here's the kicker, the Hebrew Bible's last shout-out to the Ark was way back in 2 Chronicles 35. That bit? It talks about King Josiah going all out to spruce up the temple. But, and here's where it gets juicy, there are tons of theories about what went down with the Ark after that. One hot take? The Ark got wrecked when the Babylonians rolled in and took over Jerusalem in 586 BCE. That's what the history books say, at least. They ransacked the temple, but here's the kicker, no mention of the Ark in the loot list. Suspicious, right? Next theory on the block? King Josiah, that foresight king, might have stashed the Ark away before chaos hit. Jewish tradition hints at this move, but truth is, there's no hard proof Josiah hid it or even knew where to hide it. Then there's this Ethiopian tale, King Solomon's son, Menelik, supposedly snatched the Ark and took it back to Ethiopia. Epic story, but zero proof Menelik existed, let alone taking the Ark on a trip. Now, buckle up for the Knights Templar twist. Some say these secret society cats snagged the Ark during the Crusades and shuffled it off to France for safekeeping. Cool story, right? 
but zilch evidence they ever had their hands on it or hid it in any of those spots. But hold on to your hats because this theory's a wild ride. There's this big idea that the Ark's still kicking it, hidden under the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Some say the priests ninja-tucked it away before the Babylonian mess. Crazy, right? And here's the kicker, folks think it's still down there, waiting for the right time for a big reveal, like the ultimate hidden treasure, just waiting for the big show. All right, after King Josiah did his temple renovation in the 7th century BCE, Rumors started swirling that he had some priests stash the Ark and other holy stuff under the Temple Mount. They sealed it tight, claiming only the Messiah could decode where it was stashed. Some even say the priests who hid it died, keeping the secret super locked down. But here's the thing, there's no clear-cut evidence that the Ark was MIA when the Babylonians ransacked the place. Now, get this, theories about secret tunnels and chambers under the Temple Mount have been around for ages. Back in 81, some folks tried blowing up the Dome of the Rock, convinced they found a tunnel leading to the Ark's hideout. Then in 96, riots flared up when Israel unveiled an ancient tunnel near the Temple Mount. Talk about drama. Fast forward to 2007, a documentary claimed they found a secret passage down there leading to the Arkansas Wild Stuff, right? But hold on, critics throw shade, saying there's no hard proof backing up these wild theories. Some even say finding the Ark wouldn't change much in today's world of Judaism and Christianity. But wait, there's more. Another theory sets the Ark's location in the Church of St. Mary of Zion in Ethiopia. It's said to have taken a trip from Jerusalem, courtesy of Menelik, King Solomon's son. This story's got layers, divine assistance, a replica left in Jerusalem, and even annual processions of a replica in Ethiopian churches. Plus, Ethiopia's got a history tied to Jewish influence, adding fuel to this theory's fire. But some researchers skip the Temple Mount and Ethiopia, eyeing the Dead Sea Scrolls for clues. Among those scrolls is the Copper Scroll, a metal map of buried treasure. Here's where it gets interesting, the scroll hints the Ark might be hiding around the Dead Sea, possibly near a place called the Valley of Our. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.